join us today on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, give thanks to God for uh, his gift of rain and uh, some more coming today. And I'm sure all the farmers are very excited for that. Um, it was interesting seeing brown, the brown grass and how quickly it uh, turned back together. Uh, please make sure you sign the black pew pads for its purposes. Uh, and one note, I will try to remind us uh, when we get there, but our sermon hymn, uh, hymn uh, 717, uh, we'll be singing for stanzas 2 and 3, we'll be singing the text that's on the next page, not the ones that are there. So you'll sing 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, they're actually the original text of the hymn that uh, goes with it, and they kind of push it off the side. I'll, I'll remind you, but we'll be singing those te uh, texts for stanzas 2 and 3. But we begin this morning with hymn number 849. Your temple and eternal punishment, but I am part of 
we sorry for them, and we sincerely repent of them. And I pray you in your obvious mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, and for mercy me. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, and the call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Deliver me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This morning they cry, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O face and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Pentecost is from Job chapter 38. 
the Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the lines upon it? Or on what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud ways be stayed. And you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it. It is changed like clay out of the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their life is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. If you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep, have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scriptures say, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. They have not all obeyed the gospel. For, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the other one. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him. 
saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
causes the strongest of soldiers to quake in their boots. Fear can cause us to lash out in hostility or fear of getting hurt, either physically or emotionally. Fear can lead us to deep regret for not taking some action because of possible consequences or reaction. Fear can suck the life and will to live out of someone and can lead to soul-crushing despair. Fear is powerful. And today in our Gospel lesson, we see Peter and the other disciples filled with great fear twice in our reading. And so we pick up today, immediately after the reading from last week, where Jesus fed the 5,000 plus. The crowds had followed Jesus, giving him no respite or chance to grieve over his cousin John. They had crowded around him, begging him to heal their sick. Jesus showed his great compassion for them, attending and ministering to their needs. But as the hour grew late, the disciples acted in a bit of fear. It was a desolate place, and there was no way that they would be able to feed this great crowd. And they wanted Jesus to send the crowd away. Instead, Jesus miraculously provided for their needs of body and soul, multiplying the simple meal of bread and fish that the disciples had brought for themselves to feed the multitudes surrounding them. But now, the meal has been finished. The leftovers have been packed up into twelve baskets, and the evening is approaching rapidly. In a moment of narrative irony, Jesus now does the very thing that the disciples had wished that he would do earlier. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When the evening came, is there alone. Jesus first shoes the disciples away, sending them back across the Sea of Galilee so that he can dispense with the crowds in an appropriate manner, sending them back to their homes and villages both near and far. And then he finally gets a moment alone, a moment to pray and to grieve over the death of his cousin John, the whole reason why he withdrew to such a desolate place in the first place. And then many hours later, deep in the dark of the night, the disciples find themselves caught in a storm, making little to no headway in crossing the open waters. Now it would appear that this storm was not quite as severe as the one recorded elsewhere in the Gospels, or the time when Jesus was fast asleep in the boat, while the storm raged terribly on, terrifying the disciples. There's no indication of fear concerning the storm. For many of the disciples were hardy sailors, well-versed in navigating the open waters. Yet despite all of their skill and tenacity, they were sailing against the wind, crawling along through the inky night. It was the fourth watch of the night, roughly sometime between 3 and 6 a.m., there in the dark of the night, when the early morning rays were perhaps not even beginning to lighten the horizon yet, I saw a startling sight. Someone, or something, was moving across the water towards them. They cried out in terror, It is a ghost! But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart to his eye, do not be afraid. It's beautiful to note that word immediately. It's a word of action. Here it is a word of comfort. There is no delay. Jesus doesn't chuckle at the absurdity of his being identified as a ghostly specter. No, he immediately comforts them. His comfort comes with the command, do not be afraid. The story isn't finished there. Peter answers, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him. 
saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got back from the boat, the wind ceased. Peter, bold, brash, and so often foolish Peter, puts Jesus to the test. There's a lot tied up in those few words that he says, if it is you. Those aren't exactly words of faith. They're much more likely to be words of doubt, and yes, perhaps even fear. They're testing words. Words that allow some shelter and protection before diving in, so to speak, to believe. Jesus, again, doesn't hesitate. Just as he wasted no time in calming the seers of the disciples at large, he simply speaks, Come. Another imperative, another command. Now it's important to recognize that when God speaks, things happen. In the beginning, God spoke a few simple words of nothingness and created life. He spoke and the world was formed. Oceans lapping against the shorelines, and animals abundantly filling the land, the sea, and air of this his new creation. He spoke to and through the prophets of old, his word came true. He promised to give Abraham a son and Israel a savior. All of these things came to be. And he says that this is my body, this is my blood, it really is. Well, here too, God speaks. Jesus commands. And reality itself must obey. His command to the disciples to not be afraid is not just some empty, abstract command that has to be followed. It creates the very peace and unafraidness he instructs. So too, when he tells Peter to come to him, Peter obeys. All fear and doubt are dismissed. Peter, trusting completely in Jesus, abandons all his human reason and steps out of the boat onto the roiling waves. And perhaps even more startling than when Jesus himself came walking upon the water, our text says that Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Jesus' word is powerful. Jesus' word is efficacious. It does what he says it will. He enables Peter to walk on the water as well. But it's not Peter's efforts and actions that accomplish, uh, accomplish this. It is instead the powerful and mighty word of the Lord, Jesus himself, who makes this happen. We know this because in the very moment that Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus, he begins to sing, crying out to Jesus for rescue. Note once again that beautiful word, immediately. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of it. Peter's life was quite literally in Jesus' hands. And Jesus not immediately reacted and immediately rescued Peter. He would have quickly sunk beneath the waves. Jesus is quick to rescue, although complete with a little gentle chastisement. O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now Matthew doesn't record a response from Peter. Perhaps it's better that way. For if we ourselves were asked that same question, what response would we give? If we examine our own lives, Seeing those times when we cry out for rescue and relief, what would we find? Far too often, fear obscures us from seeing God and seeing the ways that He is working to bring us rescue. Fear causes us to distance ourselves from our fellow Christians for fear of being judged or corrected. Fear teaches us to leave our sins in the dark hiding them as best we can, and putting on a fake face that says everything is okay. Doubt creeps in. It takes our eyes off of Jesus, casting our focus, attention, even our worship, on anything and everything else. Doubt tells us that God isn't still working immediately to rescue us in our trials or sorrows. Doubt 
and fear. Just cover our eyes from seeing the truth and reality around us. God has provided immediate rescue in the person and work of Jesus. Nothing in our lives can separate us from God's love. The work of Christ on the cross ensures that we have been rescued from sin, death, and the devil. And the empty grave that first Easter morning proves that Christ has triumphed, as the triumphant one. He so richly and lavishly bestows the fruits of that victory upon us each and every day. For each and every day as the holy and precious waters of our baptisms continue to daily drown the old sinful Adam within us, Christ comes to us and says, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. These words of Christ are not said in a vacuum, nor are they empty and without meaning. Just like when Jesus spoke them to the disciples, these words continue to resonate and act because they are the very word of God. God's word does what it says it does. God's word creates faith. Faith in our hearts clings to him and the promises that he has made to us. But we may not see Christ physically reaching down to pluck us from the waters of fear. We know that he is here, speaking immediately to us in the proclamation of his word and the pronouncement of his holy absolution. So we too look to Jesus, who is our source of life and salvation. We cling to his promises, trusting that he is here in our times of need. He's given us faith, faith that trumps over fear, faith that keeps our eyes firmly fixed on Christ, him crucified for our salvation. Christ has given us his word and his sacraments to be our rescue in times of trial, to feed our weary souls, to strengthen our broken spirits. He alone is our refuge and strength. When fear and doubts threaten us, time and time again, Jesus comes to us and says, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus' our Lord. Amen. We stand as we sing to God.
continue with him at 658. Jesus Christ as Lord and be saved. 
Remember all who endure persecution for his name, and strengthen them for a bold witness. Lord, have no mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask you to raise up pastors, teachers, missionaries, and servants for all church work vocations. Bless church planters and new congregations that they may endure. Bring hope and renewal to all struggling congregations and to the pastors who serve them. Do not let fear keep us from your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, help us to trust in you at all times, Father, that we may not doubt or fear. Grant us confidence in all that you have promised to bestow daily and richly upon your people. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, you supported Peter in his doubts and fears. Keep us from sinking into despair when we suffer the trials of this mortal life. Be with those who are in need, especially Pat, Kevin, Teresa, Carla, Bob, Wayne, Nancy, Kimberly, Jody, Shirley, Arlene, Dawn, Jeff, Rosemary, Cheryl, Richard, Mike, and Roberta. Grant us your spirit, that our hearts may not waver and keep us in the grasp of your grace, that we may not lose our way or over, be overcome by weariness and struggle. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, give ear to the prayers of your people and lead us to trust in your mercy without fear, that we may be confident that you will grant to us all things needful to us and our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Close with our hymn 587. 